Hi, my name is Jesper Palmqvist. I'm Area Director for Asia Pacific for STR, a co-star group company. I'm here in Bangkok at the Thailand Tourism Forum 2022. I'm delighted to be back at this anticipated event. Now, this is a pre-recorded video for you to go more in depth, because on stage, we're going to talk more about how do you use the data. But what I want to start today about is supply. It's a very relevant topic for Thailand. And what tourism economics are saying in their forecast is that international arrivals that are so critical to this nation will take not just until 22 or 23, maybe even longer. So you still have time to look at which source markets are more relevant. No one really believes that the Chinese will, in large volume, start coming in this year. And what does it look like even in 2023? So the other markets are very, very relevant to look at now. India, US, Malaysia, Russia, and other markets as well. And while smaller markets like the countries in the Middle East and in Scandinavia, they may not contribute as much in volume, but they are higher paying guests that are coming to the city. So it's about spending the next two years on what source markets are relevant to you and your markets as well. Now, when you look at the two year graph, of course, you can see at the start, we're still a long way away from where it started. But what's interesting is really at the end, right? It grew pre-Omicron really quickly. And even if it dropped down, we're coming back up again. And that's an important point I'll get back to. When we zoom in on the last 45 days around these key markets in Thailand, what you'll see is first and foremost that drive to markets like Hua Hin, like Pattaya are back up with high weekend peaks, but also a higher bottom level. We also know that in Phuket, the extended period of holiday people from Eastern Europe and Russia are staying still throughout February. But what stands out is that the engine, Bangkok, has started to take a leap up as test and go came back into the market again. So let's spend some time talking about Bangkok, because what you see is we're still far away, and ADR, the rate levels, have not moved when here indexed to 2019. That's because no source markets have really changed yet dramatically. Occupancy has gone up, as you can see in the green line, and just that speed again, pre-Omicron, towards the end of last year. And when we delve into the submarkets, here where I am today at the Conrad Bangkok in the Sukhumvit area and the neighboring Patuman area, that's where we start to see the normal layers. Not yet the levels, but we start to see higher occupancy in those markets that usually have a lot of international arrivals. And what's interesting is, of course, we are seeing numbers here in Sukhumvit that are over 50% occupancy. We haven't seen that in almost to the date two years. I think it was March 4th or March 5th. So that's a clear sign how this works. When you open the gates, things happen really quickly. One thing that we hopefully will see in the second quarter moving forward is not so much the occupancy. That's going to stay homogenic between the high-end hotels, the mid-scale, and the economy hotels. But we will hopefully start to see the rates start to diverge more. The luxury hotels and the high-end hotels will start getting from those international travels higher rates in the next quarter or two. What is needed, of course, is midweek business, the corporate travelers, the mice business. And when you compare a market like Jakarta, now Jakarta, of course, less restricted and a very big domestic market. And as a result, they've been at 80% levels of 2019, which is a strong signal. And this is 10 weeks leading into the Omicron variant, right? So those 10 weeks, weekday business only. You compare that to Bangkok and KL. Now, Kuala Lumpur, restricted as well, but also domestic business quite strong. And Bangkok depends on international arrivals, so it keeps half of what Jakarta has been doing. So that's how important it is for that to get going. Is this worrying to see that the on the books occupancy is so low and it tapers off so quickly? Not really, because the lead time is incredibly short. We're talking seven to 14 days. And what we're seeing right now in hotels that it's starting to pick up, that pace will only accelerate when restrictions go away quite quickly. So even if you look a quarter out or a year out, the quarterly business will start hopefully to pick up quite soon. And it's so needed because when you look at maybe the more relevant data of total rev par and GOP per available room, just how far behind markets that depend on international tourism and travel, like Bali and Bangkok, how far they are in those numbers compared to China, compared to India, and government-supported markets like Singapore as well. I want to talk a bit about supply. During the worst scenarios of the COVID uh, pandemic, we saw over 30% of rooms were closed in Thailand. Since then, most of them are reopened. It's less than 5% of the rooms that are closed, and many new are coming. And it depends on where you are in the country, because over 30% of new room stock is planned in resort markets like Pattaya and Phuket. 
It's a little bit more stable, say maybe in Krabi and Samoy. And in Bangkok, we're seeing more hotels coming in the river area and Silom, which we saw also before the pandemic. And it's more muted in Hua Hin and Chiang Mai. So there's a large variation depending on where you own, operate, or manage a brand in Thailand. But Thailand remains popular. The size of the font clearly indicates which one has the most rooms planned in the pipeline. And it's your international companies, it's Thai companies, Asian, European companies, but also independent hotels. So more hotels and a wider diaspora of hotels are coming to Thailand because it remains important for long-term growth, for their profitability and for Thailand as an excellent tourism destination as well. It's also continuing to see more upscale hotels and upper mid-scale. We're not expecting a big shift in that, and as you can see, a third of new hotels is in upscale segments. What is a little bit concerning is, of course, the pace. We're quite front-heavy in terms of what is opening this year. A third of hotels are scheduled this year, and combine that with next year is half of all the hotels opening. That's a lot. Now, I think that that first number in 22 will come down a bit with some delays during this year. But that doesn't take away the risk when you look long term. Throughout a whole decade, the normal in Thailand is 2 to 4% of new supply growth. But what we're seeing now is a peak going up to 6, 7%. That will influence what the forecast will be. And what we do together with tourism economics is forecast that rates will come back within 10% this year and almost normal 2019 levels by next year. But the occupancy will take longer. The gap is just that big. So when you summarize this, what's interesting is, of course, how do you anticipate it? We've seen countless examples around the world that if you are early, if you're out the gates and are able to try and get on, working with creative solutions around f and around how you adjust to protocol, you will get an edge and come out of this faster as well. And you can stay ahead. That means you can plan your budgeting for 22 and 23 much better and longer than the weeks or months that you've been doing during the pandemic. I cannot reiterate how important it is to benchmark. Cool. Of course, it's at the core of what we do at STR, but using all the data sources you have, historic, future, PL, pipeline, supply, it's incredibly important. Never stop learning. And we know in Thailand, there is a great tradition of collaboration, and that needs to continue. If it's the GM Association here in Bangkok, Phuket Hotel Association that does a great work as well, we see it matters so much if you do it within departments, if you do it with governments, authorities, whatever it is, it matters a lot as you come out of it. The last point is around cost control. So much has been done and hard work in the last two years. We know the inflation of Thailand clearly is not the same as global inflation, but goods and services will be impacted by macroeconomic scenarios around the world without a doubt. We also had the swine flu, which disrupted the food balance in Thailand as well, and then you had GDP growth. It grew by 1.6% in Thailand last year, but the year prior it contracted by over 6%. We're in a bit of a hole. And that, as a signal, tells me, together with rising living costs and the household debt being quite high in Thailand as well, that means we need to get out of this. And the Thai government, if they continue this current progressive stance, we can see some reopening. And that gives me a little bit of cautious optimism about Q2 and Q3, that we can start seeing some more release of the test and go into a better reality. So hopefully that's valuable to you. You have the contact details to let us know more you're missing from this and anything. It's been great to see you, and I hope to see you again at the Thailand Tourism Forum 2023 in person. Stay safe. Thank you very much indeed.